Hi, this is Joan Michelson of Green Connections. I'm here at the Verge San Francisco 2013 conference, and I'm here with Lisa Ann Pinkerton, who is founder and CEO of Technica Communications. She specializes in sustainability and corporate social responsibility related issues. So my first question for you is, at Verge here, we're talking about all these innovations that are changing our world. Um, some of them have arrived, some of them are about to happen, you know, some of them are in process. We can have, and, and companies are doing a lot, we can have lots of companies taking lots of these actions and we need them to be doing that, but the companies are made up of individuals who are people, who are consumers. And without consumers doing their part, I'm not convinced we can really have a green economy, okay? And the one piece that's still really missing is consumers are really not adopting this quite yet. Um, recycling is pathetic in this country. Um, electric vehicles are, you know, they're grow all of this is growing, it's trending up, which is great. But the numbers are still, the percentages are minuscule. So what are the, uh, what actions are consumers adopting and how do we get them to do more? Mm -hmm. Great question, and thank you for having me. This You're is welcome. really exciting. You're um, I always go back to it's the education component. A lot of people just don't know the possibilities and know what's out there. But more, more importantly, we are very receptive to what our peers do and what our peers share for us. So the more of us that can share with others what we're doing and how we're incorporating sustainability practices in every part of our lives, the, the more that the other people are going to learn about that and implement it themselves. Um, when I was in college, I recycled, but the girl who lived below me didn't. And the only reason she didn't is because nobody really showed her how easy it was. And once I did that, she became a very strong component of recycling, hmm. proponent of recycling. And that's just one example of how, w as a society, especially as consumers and p consumers working in these companies that are doing great things, we need to take the, that philosophy and really start to evangelize it more. So it's a function of making it easy for them to say yes to these actions. Mm -hmm. um, what can companies do, what can people do individually? Um, you know, companies are trying to get this message out. I mean, everybody loves green branding, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's like, you know, mom and pop and apple pie. But at the same time, there's still a lot of skepticism that, you know, is it really going to pay off because, the, you know, consumers are, you know, they say they want, I mean, 71% of consumers say they consider the environment when making a purchasing decision, but it doesn't close the deal. Mm -hmm. And they're not getting the information they need to do it with. So how do we change the paradigm and, and faster? We change the paradigm through creating emotional connections for people. One of the issues around sustainability and, uh, and corporate social responsibility is that everybody's got a different value proposition. For some mm. people, maybe their mothers, and, and they want to leave the planet better for their children. Oh, maybe everybody's got a different motivation, and that's what it makes it really difficult to get the word out to people and to get people getting the information that they need and then taking action on it. Mm. So the more we all can do, especially from companies, to educate the consumer, tell stories, use case studies, real life examples with pictures of these real people talking about what they did, that's how we're going to get people really motivated to make a change in their lives. Because let's face it, we like stability, we like things to remain constant, there's a fear of change, but if you put change into a perspective of this is actually doing something good, you feel good about it, it's like making a donation at church, you feel a little bit better once you've done so it. So how does money play into this? I mean a lot of what we hear is you know, money savings through energy savings, energy efficiencies. Um, saving money on gas by driving mm -hmm. an electric car mm -hmm. or, or a plug-in hybrid or a hybrid. Um, where does money come in? And I mean, you would think that, you know, everybody loves to save money. You know, you see these ads of, you know, 20% off and, mm -hmm. and they stand in line waiting, right? So where does money play into this, into the hierarchy of decision-making factors? I think it's a very strong decision factor, especially uh, the closer you get to business and the closer you are to um, businesses making these decisions. And it also depends on what, uh, what position of the, on the economic scale people are. So the higher on the economic oh, really? scale you are, the less motivated you're going to be about saving money. 
more motivated you're going to be about making a, uh, a, a, a philosophical statement with your solar panels or your Tesla vehicle or what have you. So the higher income levels are more interested in sort of the, the value driven buy mm -hmm. and the and is there a is there an income level where that breaks? I mean, is it is it fifty thousand a year? Is it a hundred thousand a year? Is it I think it depends on where you live, really. Okay. I mean, here it's probably going to be higher than somewhere else in the country. Here, in San Francisco. Yeah, San right. Francisco, or any uh, probably major metropolitan mm -hmm. area that has a mm -hmm. similar cost. And I mean, it all depends on on a variety of factors, specifically how close to a fear factor losing money is for a person in their psyche. Ah. Right. So if you have money scarcity and you're afraid of losing money or, or spending too much money, you actually might be more motivated to go a sustainability route because it's gonna save you money. Yeah, but there are, I mean, we can talk about this for a long time, mm -hmm. which we don't have time right now, but there are investments you have to make in order to make some of these savings right. too. And so it's a, it's a, do I spend it now and save it later or do I not spend it now and spend and for, more I mean, and for a lot of people, they don't have the money to spend it now and right. save it later. Right. So we got to come up with more financing models, like yes. we've talked about here, yeah. to make it really easy for people. We need innovation and financing we need a, models. We definitely That's need right. innovation and financing models, especially with the retrofit market, with energy efficiency. Solar is pretty much taken care of as far as the financing right. is concerned, but there's so much more we need to be doing around energy efficiency and sustainability. Well, one of the things that um, I know, and I, and I know that you know, is women make 80% of the purchasing decisions. And, uh, make or influence. Um, when I was in the car business, people would say men are the ones that buy cars, but what really happens if you drill into the research is the woman in the household says, here, honey, here's five cars, I'll buy, pick one. Mm -hmm. I rest my case. <laughs> so, um, and you head up a group, you founded a group called Women in Clean Tech and Sustainability. Mm -hmm. um, how do we get more women involved professionally in this space and able to get more economic parity? We get more women involved in the space by providing them with avenues to network with each other, share experiences, and support each other in their career development. A lot of the, uh, a lot of, we have a lot of women in our group. We have almost 500 members right now. Do you really? Mm -hmm. Wow. Most of them are in the Bay Area, but they're also all over the country. And, uh, like Whitney said. <laughs> <laughs> but the majority of, uh, we have, you know, a good chunk of the women are wanting move from high tech into clean tech or they want to move from wherever they are into the sustainability space. Well, that's interesting. So they want to transition from another industry. They want to transition. Rather than make their own industry more green, mm -hmm. they want to get into the sustainability. Oh, that's interesting. Well, I mean, there are women who are also making their industry more green, mm -hmm. but there's more opportunity within the sustainability and clean really? tech sectors. There's more opportunity to cross, to move laterally. What kind mm -hmm. of roles are you seeing women generally in? Well, women are either, uh, they're either in the um, engineering, uh, sales, business development, marketing arenas. We have a lot of scientists, a lot of incredibly smart women who have been doing mechanical engineering or electrical engineering in the high-tech computer spaces, and they want to take the, exper the expertise that they have and bring it to sustainability and wow. clean tech, because that's really what's well, needed. Well, that's what we really need. Mm -hmm. That is what we really need. That's great. Well, thank you so much, Welcome. Lisa Ann Pinkerton of Technica Communications. Thank you for joining us on Green Connections in the Verge San Francisco 2013. Thank you for having me. Look forward me. to it. Thanks. Thanks. Take care.